اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الذين يبخلون ويأمرون الناس بالبخل ويكتمون ما آتاهم الله من فضله واعتدنا للكافرين عذابا مهينا والذين ينفقون اموالهم رئاء الناس ولا يؤمنون بالله ولا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الاخر ومن يكن الشيطان له قرينا فساء قرينا وماذا عليهم لو آمنوا بالله واليوم الآخر وأنفقوا مما رزقهم الله وكان الله بهم عليما إن الله لا يظلم مثقال ذرة وإن تك حسنة يضاعفها ويؤت من لدنه أجرا عظيما صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين So yesterday we had uh, read the ayah of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained the rights of so many different kinds of people over us and in the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said that these rights are not fulfilled by people who have kibr within them, who have arrogance within them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we mentioned, there's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told the Sahaba that a person who has even a particle of kibr, of arrogance within their heart, they are not going to enter Jannah. So the Sahaba asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, Ya Rasulullah, a man wishes that his clothes be nice and his shoes. The Prophet sallallahu said that in Allah jameel wa yuhibbul jamal. There's an ayah of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has part of the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is beautiful and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes beauty. In Allah jameel wa yuhibbul jamal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes his ni'mah upon people. So that is not kibr. That if somebody wears nice clothes or nice shoes, that is not kibr. The Prophet ﷺ then went on further to explain that kibir is denying what is right, denying what is right and considering others inferior. So there's two things that the Prophet ﷺ counted as kibir. Number one, denying what is right, turning away when you are presented with the right thing and considering others lowly, inferior. And this ayah and the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has went on further to explain it. Hadith Abdullah ibn Abbas has narrated that this ayah came specifically, the specific, the special address of this ayah was the Yahud, the Jewish people. And they were like Kibr and all the associated things personified. They had, they had the most of those qualities. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Alladina yabkhalun, these people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about in the last ayah, that they do Kibr. Alladina yabkhalun, these people are such that they do bukhl. What is bukhl? Stinginess, niggardliness, miserliness. When there is a time to spend, they become, they are unwilling to do it. Alladina yabkhalun. So not only they, they do bukhl, wa yamurun an nasa bil bukhl. And not only that they do bukhl themselves, they command others to do bukhl. They stop others from spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَكْتُمُونَ مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ And they conceal what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them with this fuzzle, with his fuzzle, with his grace. And this was, this is the picture of Yehud at that time and pretty much till the day of judgment. That even if they are wealthy, they are going to conceal it. They are going to conceal it. And they do bukhl. They are very niggardly. They do not want to spend. The other thing is that Bukhl also encompasses not only bukhl or niggardliness, miserliness in terms of uh, spending wealth, but also in terms of explaining and coming to terms with what is right. So they knew fully well, they had ilm, the Yahud of Medina, they were known as scholars of the area. They had very good ilm of the old books and through those signs they knew fully well that the Prophet ﷺ is the final and true Prophet of Allah. But they did bukhl with their ilm. They, did, they were stingy and they neither came to terms with the reality of the Prophet ﷺ become, uh, becoming the Nabi, the final Nabi, nor did they let others accept it. So the ilm that they had, they, they, they concealed it. 
they concealed that ilm so that people will not know. So this is bukhul bil ilm. So they also did bukhul bil ilm and that is also haram. That is also haram. Therefore it is said that if you are that person, that only person in a community who knows the right thing and the other people come and ask you about something, you have two options. Number one, if there is someone else that can also guide them, then you should guide them to that person. Otherwise, if there is no one other, other than you in the community, then it becomes incumbent upon that person to tell the right thing to them, even if it causes them harm, even if it causes them harm. So anyway. وَأَعْتَدْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابٌ مُّهِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completing the ayah with the, re the reward that they are going to get, which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them that we have prepared for them a punishment that is humiliating. So in this world, they are seeking honor. They think that they are going to hold back their wealth and therefore be rich people. They, are, they think that they are going to hold off their ilm, hold back their ilm and thus attain a status. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared a punishment for them that is going to humiliate them in the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. وَالَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ The third quality, so the, these people who are mutakabbir, have kibr, they have bukhl and not only they have bukhl themselves but they command others for bukhl, stinginess and they hide what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. The third quality is وَالَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ When these people even spend their money رِعَا النَّاسِ They do it to show off people. So the thing is that when the, the real time comes to spend, when there is a real need, they will not spend, they will hold back. But whenever they will see there is an opportunity that people will see and people will declare them good people and honorable people, because of their spending, then they will be the first one to spend. And this is the case true of the Jewish people as said in the Quran. وَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And they do this because they do not believe in Allah or the Day of Judgment. Because if somebody believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment, they are going to do it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to show off to people. And Riya is such a bad thing, such a henuous act in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that if somebody Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very ghani when it comes to shirk when it comes to shirk and riya is declared by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as shirk asghar the little shirk the minor shirk so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told the sahaba that I do not I do not worry I, I am worried about you for doing shirk asghar and what is shirk asghar the sahaba asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said riya showing off and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that whoever Praise for showing off, they did shirk. Whoever keeps a fast for showing off, they commit shirk. Whoever spends in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sadaqah, for showing off, they did shirk. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect, protect us from that. وَمَنْ يَكُنِ الشَّيْطَانُ لَهُ قَرِينًا فَسَاءَ قَرِينًا Allahu Akbar. So anyone for whom, and especially for these people, their companion is shaitan. Their companion is shaitan. And that is why they are doing all of this. And he is a very evil companion because he is a, an evil companion because the property of a companion, the quality of a companion is that they take you down the road that they are going themselves. So if you have a good companion, they are, they are headed to Jannah, they will take you to Jannah because you will learn the good qualities and the qualities of the people of Jannah will spring forth from within you. And if you've taken shaitan as your companion, Shaitan is definitely headed into hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to put him into hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised hellfire for him. And these people are also going to go to hellfire with him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. وَمَاذَا عَلَيْهِمْ And what harm was there for them? What, what problem did they, what issue did they have? لَوْ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ Had they brought faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَوْ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهُ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And also brought faith in the day of judgment, the last day. وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَهُمُ اللَّهِ And would have spent from what? From that which had been given to them in the first place by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So they think that they have earned it for themselves. What harm, what trouble could have come to them had they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment as is clear to them from the, their own scriptures and from the teachings of the Anbiya that they claim to follow themselves. 
and this is also for Muslims as well that if you spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believing in Allah and hoping for a reward in the hereafter there is no harm coming to you there is simply not even the tiniest harm coming to you instead instead وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِهِمْ عَلِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what they are doing is, is, is fully aware إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to be cruel to not going to uh, does not do wrong to anyone even مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةِ not even to the extent of a particle or the other meaning in the time of Arabic of that time ذَرَّةِ was the small little red ant so some of us have went with that meaning that or some have gone with the literal meaning which is dharra means small particle and some have gone with the red end so anyway small even to the smallest extent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do cruelty to anyone wa in taku hasanatan had they done it had they done it the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wa in taku hasanatan yudha'ifha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have multiplied it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have multiplied it many fold so what issue did they have وَيُؤْتِي مِنْ لَذُنْهُ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا So the, the Fuqaha have explained that the least reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give upon any good deed is at least 10 times. And that is, again, the fine explanation is that that is to explain it to us because we human beings have an intellect that, is, that has been trained to think in terms of numbers. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not bound by numbers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not bound by multiplying it only to tenfold or to whatever fold by a number Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is limitless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is limitless and all the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are limitless this is our aqidah that all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only himself is limitless but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the qualities so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem his karam is limitless so nobody should dare to limit the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by numbers it is just to explain it to us. That will be, the minimum is 10 times. And not only that, in some hadith it is mentioned that some deeds they will be multiplied even up to the extent of 2 million times. But again those are numbers. And those are numbers to explain to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not limited by any numbers. And whatever deeds you bring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter how much you multiply to them, no matter how much you multiply them, they cannot become a cost of Jannah. They cannot become a cost of Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, apart from your deeds, وَيُؤْتِ مِنْ لَدُنْهُ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his own side, from his own self, is going to give you much more beyond that, which is أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا That is, a great reward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give out of his own pleasure, from his own side. Spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a lot of virtues. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that there is two angels that descend every morning. One of them says, may Allah give the best reward to the one who spends in Allah's path. The other, other one makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, oh Allah, whoever is stingy in spending in your path, destroy them and their wealth. Destroy their wealth in this world. So this is the, this is the uh, bad outcome of stinginess in this dunya. But the Prophet ﷺ has went further and another hadith the Prophet ﷺ has said that one who is sakhi, the one who spends in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are closer to Allah and they are closer to Jannah and they are closer to people as well. Conversely, the one who is stingy, the one who is miserly, they are far away from Allah. They are far away from Jannah and they are far away from the people and they are very close to hellfire. They are very close to hellfire. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the ones who spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidah Asma radiallahu anha, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained to her the method of spending. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, O Asma, when it comes to spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not calculate, do not calculate, do not count. Otherwise what will happen is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start counting in your regard. So before, if you are giving, if you are calculating before giving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're doing the numbers, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also start to calculate and give you in calculated time. If you, the meaning is that if you spend freely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also give you freely. And do not hold back. Otherwise, Allah will also start holding back from you. And do spend whatever you can. However much you can do, spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ has said that there's two qualities that never become together, that never gather in a mu'min. One is being stingy and the other is bad, bad morals. Su'il khul, bad man, bad morals, bad manners. You got it right.
الحمد لله رب العالمين صلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين رب فر ورحم وأنت خير الراحمين لا إله إلا الله الحليم الكريم سبحان الله رب العرش العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك والغنيمة من كل بر والسلامة من كل إثم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هم من إلا فرجته ولا حاجة هي الكرضا إلا قضيتها يا رحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعلنا من أهل القرآن الذي يهلك خاصتك صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه اجمعين آمين ورحمة الله وبركاته